towering cross was ignited and the Ku Klux Klan was reborn. The organizer of the spectacle was a preacher turned salesman named William Joseph Simmons. Colonel William J. Simmons was a failed Methodist clergyman who had left, left the cloth in order to become a fraternal organizer. Simmons claimed the idea of starting a new clan came to him in a vision. The birth of the group was simply a matter of timing. The moment arrived with the release of one of the greatest cinematic achievements of its time. Just days following the Stone Mountain Cross burning, The Birth of a Nation was released in the South. D.W. Griffith's film played to sold-out theaters. The filmmaking was flawless. The history was not. In The Birth of the Nation, the Klan is a heroic force. It is the defender of white womanhood against the ravages of the newly freed slaves, these animals, these beasts, whose main purpose in life is to ravage white women. It's a heroic force. It's a noble force. In the film's climactic scene, a group of hooded clansmen ride to the rescue of the film's imperiled heroine as she is threatened by lust-crazed black men. Black Americans reacted to Birth of the Nation with horror, with protest, with uh, demonstrations. It was an assault on black America at a time when there were no depictions of black people as human beings. This depicted us as beasts and depicted these criminals as heroes and saviors. Despite its historical inaccuracies, the film gained legitimacy after President Woodrow Wilson screened the epic in the White House. It is like writing history with lightning, the president said. My only regret is that it is also terribly true. The effect of the film was enormous. Um, it increased hatred toward blacks. It made people believe in the history that was portrayed in it. Even Unitarian ministers endorsed it. And it just had a great effect on changing people's attitudes toward uh, blacks and convincing them that these people really do need to be controlled. At his Atlanta home, Simmons mapped out the vehicle of control in a manual called the Koran. The handbook described the Klan's secret rites, rituals, and oaths. It defined the meanings of strange names created for Klan ceremonies, regents, and officers. Simmons bestowed upon himself the title of Imperial Wizard, Emperor of the Invisible Empire. As Simmons set forth to build his kingdom, he found recruits hard to come by. But Klan publicists devised a sales pitch based on the slogan, 100% Americanism. The new Klan would be a patriotic organization for American-born white Protestants only. Come listen, all you gals and boys, I'm just from Tuckahoe. I'm going to sing a little song, my name's Jim Crow. Wheel about and turn about and do just so. Every time I wheel about, I jump Jim Crow. I went down to the river. In 1836, Jim Crow is born. He begins his strange career as a malicious minstrel caricature of a black man, created by a white man to amuse white audiences. Jim Crow would come to symbolize one of the most tragic eras of race relations in American history, a time deeply rooted in promise and contradiction. is the following vote. Russell, 263. McNutt, one half vote. Truman, 947 and one half. I'm 
sorry that the microphones are in your way, but they have to be where they are because I've got to be able to see what I'm doing, as I always am able to see what I'm doing. I accept the nomination. I've discussed a number of these failures of the Republican 80th Congress, and every one of them is important. Two of them are of major concern to nearly every American family. The failure to do anything about high prices and the failure to do anything about housing. My duty as president requires that I use every means within my power to get the laws the people need on matters of such importance and urgency. I am therefore calling this Congress back into session on the 26th of July. <laughs>